on um, construction or, or a reappraisal of construction methods um, for the CPD 710 course. Um, like I said, this is really just a, a, a recap of um, knowledge that you've, you've covered in undergraduate years, just prompting and repeating some, some aspects that you might have forgotten or something that we just um, never thought would be important. Like I said, I think this is not um, advanced construction systems, it's really simple. Um, so uh, if there's any other questions, please contact me and um, we can cover that in more detail. Okay, so we'll talk about um, typical applications and I think the only really important one, although there's tons in terms of the roof structure and the, the roof edges and window placements and so forth, I think we'll, um, it's, it'll take, I mean, you can't cover it in one lecture. Um, something to think about is the way that columns meet the ground and what, what are the different options. And remember that that reflects often the way that you think about the design, the concept you've developed for the design, the intention of the design, if you want to say it in that way, of the of what it is, you know, how you articulate it. But it also is, in some cases, simply how do you do it? As you see in this case, it's on a rock bed that, that they've had to fix the, the, the columns. And, and it's just impossible to dig a big hole and fill it in there, where if it's in sand, you can do something like that. And you can simply dig it. It's got different implications when you dig a hole in sand than when you have to fix it on top of a rock bed. Um, but on the other hand, as you see in this design, this is a steel column meeting the, 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 the solid tiled base, and it's actually lifted up. You know, really articulating that as a, as a separate entity. So um, explore, explore the options that they, that they are. If you think about, um, so just to, if you think about the way that um, columns can join or meet the ground, there's actually two basic ways. The one is fixing on top of the ground. So it's 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 not it's often related to places in designs where you would you, you would provide the surface bed um, for it or the floor finish. You often you won't often do this on top of the floor finish or finished floor. I mean it's that's that's there's a big risk to to that layer cracking and being damaged before you know at, over time but you'll often fix it on top of the surface bed that you've cast in place. Um, the other option is to fix it into the soil so 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 in this case or the ground and I will discuss that in more detail. Um, so when you fix it on top I think it's important to think about the construction system as a whole. So when do you lay layer the, the concrete? When is that cast? What comes next then? Is it the, the fitting that is put into place? Do you need to provide a base plate for it or is the base plate part of the fitting? Why do we have a base plate? It's a base plate often spreads the weight out so it's a bit more, so, it's, so, so you've got a bit larger area with less pressure points where the pressure comes into it. Do you actually use a leveling screed underneath it so that you ensure that even if the surface bed's not absolutely perfect, that you can get the base plate absolutely level before you, you fix it. So that leveling screed gets added later. Because often you will, you will have someone casting a large surface bed and that won't actually be absolutely perfect. There might be some some inaccuracies and the leveling screed could then fix it up. Um, on the other hand, think about how you bring it to site. Do you cast a bracket like that or um, the anchor bolt into place and then you fix the bracket or the base plate to it. And there's obviously a risk to that. If you do that, then you have to be sure that that casting is absolutely perfect before you, before you, 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 you before it sets. And when you bring the column, it must actually work. I mean, otherwise, if it's inaccurate, then you can't fix it. Um, so a, a better way to go about it is to say, let's rather cast the concrete, and then we come and we measure, we know where we need to drill the holes and we epoxy bolt or the anchor bolts into place. And then you can go and say, okay, maybe we need to still allow for a leveling screed underneath that just to ensure it's level. Um, and then the, the then you, you can you can come and fix the footing. As you see in here, this is column coming down and these are, it's, 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 it's a steel shoe that's actually 
bolted to the ground and then it's fixed to that and and, and it really differs in terms of how you do it I mean there's, there's a myriad of ways of doing it something to be careful of is this is often what we do is like it seems really beautiful it seems like the column comes down and it never really meets the ground it's, it is nice but there's certainly a, a, a compressor strength risk there because that could actually be quite be a weak point in the process so discuss intentions like that with the engineer before and, and be sure that that bracket will work for the weight and the and the and, and the um the 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 uh, the, 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 the direction that the um the, the 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 forces will have at that point so it doesn't become a moment that will that will um be damaged in the process if you want there's some interesting examples i don't have an image of that but where you would sometimes use this with a hinge where it becomes you design for the moment but it's actually what you do is you you you, you you'll put the column in place and then you'll lift the column and it will fix to the footing and then you can fix it to the to the to the roof structure and whatever else so you might actually want to design a hinge to be there but again it must be part of the design process in the in the in the um in the design in the end um last thing to think about is when you fix that footing onto the ground where will the finished floor level be do you want to in the end cover it completely which has implications because the steel will move differently from the tiles for instance it's not optimal um and the chance of fixing it nicely is actually problematic and if you ever need to fix anything it's difficult or do you want the concrete or, or do you want the steel after the floor finish to be flush with it at the very end or do you actually add a, a bit of a screed now to that and then you then cast the finish to be here above it so that you have this little bit of a space where it's where the footing sits in it all talks about how the, the column meets the ground it's whether it's on top above or inside i mean so there's a number of ways of, of working with it. You can always cover it in the end. You don't want to see any fixing, um, but then you have to design for that. If you fix into the ground, so often gun pole structures, we do that. We don't often do that with steel. It's, 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 you've got a risk of, of rust and, and damage taking place. Um, but for gun pole structures, I think it is often quite effective. And it's just a few things to remember. You have to dig quite a deep hole, obviously. So you ensure that it's deep enough, so it keeps it in place. A good, um, you know, half a meter could, could already be sufficient. It all depends on the type of structure and how well, the soil conditions and so forth. But don't, you know, you can't just simply fix it with 100 mils underground. It's not going to give you that the, the, the strength. Um, but then it's always good to have a, 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 a concrete collar around it so that you can shed the water from it so that you don't get water flowing too much into this this the, this cavity that's formed because this gum pole is going to shrink over time it's going to dry out a little bit so there will be a gap even though you think you've sealed it properly and the water will go in there and then this shows concrete punching pads but it's not necessarily better i think it's better to use gravel at the bottom so you go you you, you compact that that the, the footing at the bottom put gravel in put it down and then fill it up as you can see you do compact it back full concrete mm, it's okay but there's still a risk that you'll have water collecting right at the bottom and you'll actually have a rotting pole in a few years time so rather get the water to move past and out if the pole can dry out again it's, it's absolutely fine then as noted here always brace these these these, these structures when you've got extensive structures like this um we often forget bracing and it really changes i mean i think then you've got a very strong system um, that can withstand a range of forces being sideways or, or vertical in the process. Um, if we talk about fixing, I think the first thing to think about when you when you think about how you fix different entities is not to start with what do I have, you know, do I have screws, bolts, nails, or whatever, but to rather say what am I trying to achieve through fixing. I think. The way we fix, fix um, different aspects or components talks about the design in the end. Do you want to hide it, as you'll see with Alvaro Caesar's work in, in the Anyang Gallery, or do you want to um, celebrate it? 
can you see this is the work from King Akuma, that's one of the joints. And there's a number of joints in this. This is the nest we grow where they used, used I know that I said they, there are some where they don't use mechanical fixing, but there's a range of joints where you, that really articulate it in the end. Or do you have a project where you simply need to be economical? What's the most effective, most efficient way to do it? I think you need to understand what those implications are when you fix it. We've spoken quite a bit of different aspects about fixing. I think the only thing to think about it is, oh, and this is beautiful. This is actually the, um, not a beautiful photograph, but the, the, the fixing is actually quite amazing. These are precast concrete steps where the steel plate cast into it, and then a lug is welded to it, and it's then fixed to a bracket onto the masonry wall. So it's really just floating above the wall here. It's absolutely beautiful. This is by Earthworld at the um, Future Africa um, campus. A few things to think about. When you join different materials, they move differently. As soon as you articulate with a different material, like steel, for instance, between the, steel, the concrete and the masonry, that will move differently. Also, in terms of settling over time, temperature differences, and moisture. So think about that. Think about how you can allow for that. Often we, therefore, mechanical joints are sometimes a bit better to, to allow for that. If it's not a big entity, or you might have to look for movement joints and so forth, which you need to cut in before and then feel full in with a sealant and, and, and cover, so you can allow for that movement to take place. Um, when you combine different materials, think about the assembly process. How do you actually fix things together? What comes first? What do you need to build in? What do you need to bring later? How do you fit the, the ha your hand in there to screw fix or bolt fix that in? Can you fix, if you want to bolt something, can you get your hand on the other side of that um, to hold the, the nut on the other side? So I always think, there my suggestion is, if it needs to be, draw the assembly process. I mean, that's what, um, with Carlos Scarpa did, he simply he drew the, the whole process out in the way, in the end. Um, and that could help you to define those different, um, what, not define, but identify the risks that you need to, that you need to be aware of and how you can fit it together in the end. Um, and there's a number of options to fix in the end, but look for that. Um, some things can, sometimes you, like, you, sometimes you can, you can sometimes epoxy bolt uh, or use epoxy to fix a number of different materials or or, or, or mechanical components together um, so epoxy bolt into a wall for instance and that's that's using epoxy with a steel threaded rod for instance that can work um, but you have to explore that you know discuss it with the builder on site or the person will make it look for what's the most effective but also look for the way that it can actually be done as per the intention of your project. So it's aesthetically correct in the end, because that's often a big mistake we make, is we, we're very good with getting the overall in place, but rarely we go and say, well, what does it mean when I'm putting these together? Why do I choose to have square washers in that design in the end? <clears throat> What's the implications in the end? Okay, so as you know, we've got a number of different types of ways of fix, fixing um, materials. We often use screws. It's often used for joinery and for steel. It can be used for smaller steel entities. And these days we actually get a lot of them as self-tapping screws altogether. So you don't need to drill massive holes beforehand. A lot of it's actually, um, a lot of it is, 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 it actually allows for it to cut its own hole, which actually makes it really, um, 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 fits quite neatly into what you're what you're fixing together. But um, so at first of all, define which is the right type of screw that you're going to use, and um, then you can also define. And I've shown you here, I think it's better whether it's going to be a countersunk um, screw. So you actually want to 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 hide the screw away. You can even even um, allow for it to be hidden completely, so you, you can't just sunk it to the extremity, it's actually covered with, with, with material in the end if it's timber, for instance. Um, or you want to use a raised, a raised counter sunk um, head, so effectively you're articulating it in the end. Um, we use something like a, a hexagon washer head, for instance, where this is something that really needs to be fixed. Um, either, either you need to be able to 
to use a, 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 a spanner to fix it. So you, you, you need something with a bit more strength to fix it together. And this is often used in conjunction with bolts. When you can't get to the other side to hold the melt, then they're not in the end. And then what we, and I think one way you often see it is, 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 is roof, as roof nails, what they call it, or, or the way you fix roofs together, together because you use it with a neoprene um, washer. So, and typically with roofs is if I'm fixing it from the top of the roof, I can't get to the end to hold something down to keep it in place. And this will, will fix it in, will, will, will keep it there in the, in the end. And um, so remember that screws also come in different materials. They can be stainless steel, they can be brass, um, <clears throat> they can also be um, 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 anodized, they can be, you often have these black screws in the end. Um, define that because you don't want someone to use the wrong color in the end. That's really problematic. Um, you want to you want to have the right color fixed through the right um, component in the end. We often use bolts more when we start dealing with structural systems, and when you actually need to um, fix large components together. Screws aren't. They're usually much smaller. As we, where bolts can range from, you know, M M M twelve or M sixteen, which is just normal. Well, it's large for 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 components, but you start looking at structural bolts as an M twenty, for instance, and and then you can actually get very very large ones, um, um, depending on the con con context you're working with. Um, so it's often really more used for. Um, for, for structural in, in applications. The one thing to think about is that you can either design it to be, in this case, you'll see it will be finished, covered in, uh, with a floor finish in the end. That's the intention. So here we can see the articulation of the bolt fixing, um, which uses an Allen, which uses an Allen key um, 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 uh, uh, joint or, or key in the end to, 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 to hold it. But, that's really articulated, and this will be exposed where this is not. But in this design, it was you see that they've actually defined where the bolts need to be, need to be positioned, because this is part of the final design in the end. We want to show it in in in, in the end. Um, then remember, we use washers between the nut and the bolt, um, and that's just good practice so that we can't so that you you don't damage the steel the plate or the timber when you roll it down and it actually spreads the weight a little bit more as well so sometimes you might want to use a, a larger washer to spread the weight so you don't have the damage in the end and um, threaded rods are really um, helpful to to work to it's often used in gum pole structures where you want to actually have join quite deep sections because a threaded rod you can buy it quite a long that long section in the end to, to bolt it to, together um, and then that can be fixed on the one side and, and so forth so, so you can look at that like we said before coach screws are one of those examples where you can't get to the nut on the other side and you simply use a screw then to, to, to fix it in place in the end you might um, you'll, you'll, you won't often define or specify the use of rivets um, necessarily as a structural entity. It used to be, you, I mean, in the past we used it as a structural um, system or, or a fixing method to fix um, steel structures together, it's like the Empire State Building, for instance, or Eiffel Tower, for instance. Um, and that, but it's a very different process. We actually heat massive nails and then we, 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 we then um, press them together when they're heated and um, through a hammering process, and that um, for, makes the rivet. But these days we use um, aluminium rivets, what we call it pop rivets, I think you might know, know it. Um, and it really just pulls the, 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 the shaft through until it squashes the two steel plates together. It's often used to fix steel plates or small components together. And the reason you'll do that is because you can't get to the other side. So typically you'll, do, you'll, you'll drill the hole, put the rivet in, and you'll pull it through with a rivet gun, and you'll end up with... With, with, with the two plates or two components being fitted together. It's not used extensively. It's not a structural entity as you would see here in, the, in, in, the, in older structures. These days we often rather use a welding method and, and mechanical fixing to, to, to fix it together in the end. Um, 
Nails are not, it's still there. You don't use nails that often anymore necessarily. I think often these days in a lot of the joinery people prefer to simply use screws. Um, it's just more accurate. But on the construction site, you'll often use it still, you still, um, you know, if you need to quickly fix something or you need to put some, keep something in place while you're fixing it, then, then they, will, they will use nails in the end. Um, nails are used though for um, flooring though, and you'll then actually, um, for, for, for floorboards, if you are still building a hollow floor, if you still construct a hollow timber floor, I mean, a lot of times we these days use laminated timber um, systems and so forth. So, um, yeah, have a look at that if you need to be, but it's, it's not used extensively necessarily anymore. What we do know is what often occurs in, on practice on site these days is the use of, um, of patent fixing methods. So those are very specific products you'll buy, and you, there's a specific patent that's, um, fixing method that you will define, and then, and, and then finally you can, yeah, the, the specialist will come and provide the products, they'll check the quality and so forth. Um, something, for instance, that, that is really interesting is that the use of double-sided construction tape. So this is like double-sided tape that we know, but really strong tape, and they've used it in the BRT systems in Twane, where they fix the glazing with that. Um, so it's just simply like double-sided tape, and then they put the glazing in place. It's not a simple process to fix it, keep it in place, fix it, keep it there, and um, and, and there's a very specific product you would use. Then. So a lot of that needs to be in place, but you'll get a specialist to help you install it in the end. The one thing to think about is that it, it is important to, um, to, to, to uh, get the specialist involved in this, in, in, in such as, if you use such a system, get them involved early enough so they advise on the type of material you're fixing, on the way that you prep the, 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 the fixing um, or, the, or the entity that you're fixing on to in the end, and all those kind of aspects. Don't, don't neglect that leap till the very end um, because a, a patent fixing method really requires very specific conditions in order for its guarantee to be um, to, to be retained. Um, so then if we get to um, to putting it all together, I think one needs to just um, remember that it's so there's certainly a, some really beautiful designs and structures and systems um, um, that's been developed, but, but putting them together is, is certainly more difficult and more complex. So the best thing to think, in a way I would suggest you, you go about with it, is think of, think through the process of making it. Can you make it? Um, how would you do it in the end? Um, and and it, uh, you know, a typical example of this is, is, is this, this is a photograph that I also um, borrowed from um, Aubrey Crawford, where they had to cast the 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 basement for for uh, his his um, his daughter's house, but um, that circular staircase that will come up there. Um, well, I think this was not this was the first floor. I apologize. I apologize for that. Um, they had to fit the formwork in place and then actually get all the services, the steel, <laughs> the the, the, the conduits, the pipes, everything in there. So something to think about is, like, how do you get all of this into place? Because often when we draw it, we simply draw a line and we assume that it's fine. But the builder comes and actually need to, you know, put all these different aspects in place and then ultimately fill, fill it in with concrete and so forth. I mean, it's another example is, this is an example from from um, Loftus Park where they, the, the design has these beautiful trees and on, on, on um, a slab that's above the, uh, uh, the super basement, and um, but between that you still need to fit in the air conditioning. How do you, when do you bring the air conditioning into place? How do you deal with waterproofing then throughout all of this? Who fits the waterproofing in? So how do you chamfer those edges so you, you can actually fit the waterproofing around there and then have points there where the water comes in? How do you go and Think about the formwork that needs to be put into place so you can you can cast the concrete around it. Um, so the, there's just I think try and imagine what the process would be. 
and think carefully what the risks would be when you, you do that. Think about who accesses it, how do they fix it, and what are the, all the other things that need to be accommodated. And, um, and because you might not always know about it, if you're designing a large design, a building, or space, or uh, interior, I think of landscape, you'll still have the same in landscape structures or, or spaces. Speak to the other specialists and coordinate that very, very quickly because you can have things that go wrong. I mean, this is like the Javid Museum, where the where, where, where the um, the services just don't line up. <laughs> and this, I mean, if you can fix it, this is not the end of the world. But this is a, a, a typical example of it. Um, when you, but things do go wrong. I mean, this is again, um, and Arbor shared this with the discussion where they. There was a, a, a shade structures which they which they designed and it, and the wind just came through and it dripped it all apart and um, so what can you do to try and limit these mistakes or these these problems when when this occurs speak to other specialists that's on the team with you speak to someone in your in your office or in your team before you issue it get them to look at the drawings try and look for those weak points that you have. And ultimately try and manage the risk that you have um, in, in, in the process. So is there ways that you can um, get products that are guaranteed by um, specialists or other manufacturers? Um, get If there's, for instance, waterproofing, and, and like in this case, get a waterproofing specialist to, talk to, to, to design it with you. Get them to provide the guarantee for you. But then you have to adhere to their, their specifications. So you have to be sure that that works with what your intentions are. But if you can do that, then you're sure that this product will be sufficient. And if something goes wrong, and as in this case, it's not necessarily quite your problem. It's more, it's more problematic for the one that specified it. In this case, would be the waterproofing specialist or the company. But if they've got lots of experience, so the chance of that going wrong when they specify it is actually quite low. Okay. Um, and then obviously the last thing is communicate, communicate, communicate. Because then we don't have this happening. Share and ensure that everything works. And, and, and make sure that people can talk to each other in the end. So this concludes the third video of this um, lecture. The final one will just talk about um, an approach to working in with um, complex um, and new materials and systems. Thank you.